history gems. In a previous episode, I did a forgotten person of history, and I said I'd come back to some of these unsung heroes and villains of history. Today, it's General George Monk, also known as the First Lord of Albemarle. As a general, you'd expect that he'd carried out some amazing feat on the battlefield, but actually the reason why he's forgotten, and the reason why we owe him a debt of gratitude, is he's one of the few generals who did everybody by a favour of not fighting a war, avoiding a conflict, and for that he saved thousands of lives. During the English Civil War, Monk was a royalist, and at the Battle of Newburn, he distinguished himself that even though they were heavily outnumbered and ultimately the royalists lost, Monk managed to preserve the artillery, a tactical issue that gained him credibility. He did well enough that eventually Charles I rewarded him with running the royalist armies in Ireland. But, of course, the parliamentarians ultimately won the war, and Monk was put in the Tower of London for two years. It was actually Ireland that saved him. Because he knew the land, because he knew how to fight there, Parliament put him on their side. And he agreed, and fought successfully in there for a number of years. Indeed, he became such an important parliamentarian general that by 1650 he was fighting side by side with Oliver Cromwell in Scotland. He was so successful there that ultimately he was made Commander-in-Chief of Scotland. But what Monk had shown was a realism. Moral flexibility, you might want to call it. And it's what happened next, at the end of the Republic, that makes Monk so important. We certainly don't have time to go into Oliver Cromwell, but one thing he did was undeniably create a Republic. It therefore became a surprise for both him and his critics that when he died, he asked for his son, Richard Cromwell, to be put in charge. Another way of looking at that is he was creating his own dynasty. Monk seized on this. And because he had proven himself both to the royalists and the parliamentarian forces, he was able to broker a peaceful return of the monarchy to Britain. He stopped, ultimately, another civil war. With Charles back in Britain, was Monk rewarded? You bet he was. As I said earlier, he was made a lord. He was also made a knight of the garter, one of the most prestigious organisations you could ever be in part of. But he'd also done a favour to the country. It had seen civil war and violence and wars constantly, for decades. But now, there was relative peace in Britain. We see a real return to prosperity, a rise of empire, an increase of scientific learning. Theatre came back as well. So Charles II's return, you could argue, is a return to the backward ways of monarchy, but in many ways it was a forward step in society. General Monk, we salute you. If you like this, hey, hit a like, spread the word, be good to get some more likes and views on YouTube. However, at History Gems is also available on Facebook and on Twitter. See you soon.